Hi everyone, it's Lindenherz. I thought I might show you my Ostara altar for this season. And if you uh, hear some uh, things in the background, I don't know if you're able to hear it, but I can hear it. <laughs> Certainly, I'm preparing something special for you. But this will be a topic of another video, but I can show you something. It, it will involve these here. I don't know if they're... There's some dark hair on them. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes a bit hard to uh, keep dark hair from uh, spreading everywhere. But these are elder cones. So uh, I promised you to show you how to make your own ink. And I will show you how to make elder ink, basically. And um, this is a recipe I got, uh, I, uh, or I found through a wonderful person on Instagram. Uh, who's called Wurzelweber there, and she made uh, this uh, recipe back uh, a couple of months back, and I was quite intrigued and searched for trees like this. I know this might not be quite of interest for those of you who might not have elder trees in their um, surrounding area, especially uh, possibly those who are living in the southern hemisphere, but um, there are certainly other ways to find... Um, other ways to to do your own ink i guess sometimes you just have to be open uh have to leave your eyes open or search for uh things like that maybe in certain magazines or uh, online especially online possibly there are also uh, uh ways to do your ink uh in the southern hemisphere with special plants and trees and so on and so forth but this one here i was quite intrigued by so this will be a topic for another video just a little little teaser here with these elder cones uh which i quite love uh and i found quite a good source to get more elder cones for uh my ink plants so but back to this altar space yeah all uh yeah all uh made up for for spring, all decorated for spring, and um, I will share some of the the items I have here on my altar space. Yeah, you see here in the background this gorgeous egg. Here, this one here I made um, a couple of years ago. This is made with paper, some very 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 thin paper, and these kind of paper yeah lace you could call it. And this one is a paper cutting I did. And then I put some, yeah, finish uh, on it, some lacquer or how you call it. Uh, and inside there are also two feathers. Um, I made quite a lot of them and also sold a lot of them a couple of years ago. But it's not so easy to get your hands on those. This is one of the smaller ones. There are also much bigger ones. But the little craft shop we have here uh, near our... Yeah, near, near where I live, mm, doesn't have them anymore. And when they do have some of those eggs, they are quite damaged quite often. So not so good, not so good. But these are some things. Maybe I will be able to find them other um, in the in the internet or so. Try to place it here. It's not. It was easy to get it stand properly. <laughs> <laughs> now it won't stand anymore, so this is okay. Um, I possibly uh, would love to do uh, also those eggs for my Etsy shop in the future with other paper cuttings, um, also with uh, paper cut hairs. I did. Uh, I posted a, a picture on Instagram. I will post it here at the end so you can see what I mean. These are, you can see the feather is quite familiar here. The, I used the same the same uh, template I I use for those and I used here uh, an old an old damaged book. I really like to use old damaged book books books or sometimes not so old books but damaged books. But uh, because I can't uh, bear to uh, use a very new book and uh, this is uh, yeah <laughs> I just can't do it. So another item here, this is something you might all have seen or those of you have seen who saw uh, earlier. Uh, yeah, older, possibly I should say older um, 
videos of my altar space where there are, uh, I quite often only do um, some kind of music slideshows or so of this outer space. So this is um, a goddess candle holder I made last year. I also did one for my friend Emily in France. And um, when you turn it, you see I have a candle in there. <laughs> there is this goddess pentacle on it. Um, sometimes this is also called the gardener's pentacle. Uh, and I have a necklace with this one, but I thought this might be quite lovely to have it on on a candle and also made this paper cuttings. And then I got this one here from my friend Emily in exchange, the God candle here, which is also wonderful. And she has also one, so quite fitting a pair for everyone and for every one of us. So... Yeah, um, what can I show you next? Um, this one here is, uh, I don't know if this is, you can see this is certainly some kind of uh, clay or not ceramic, but uh, you know what I mean, a uh, crafted egg. And it's from the same source, um, from the same artist, this is a local artist who also did this one here, with my little owl queen here. She's a... Uh, <laughs> she's a gorgeous gorgeous queen here <laughs> and um, her partner which is a bit yeah no no king but also wonderful and they too are here on top of my altar space I try to share with you this one at the top and try to focus yeah you see here a lot of owls there and also a hedgehog. I put it in um, because I found, uh, I, I researched these um, these animals or not animals, symbols or uh, things I could put on my altar space sometimes uh, within the um, within the Llewellyn Sabbath books that are, uh, yeah, uh, where you can get uh, uh, a book for every in each Sabbath, and sometimes they suggest not sometimes every time they 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 suggest some um, yeah maybe flowers and herbs you can use for uh, the season. And I quite like the hedgehog, although I'm at the moment lacking the meaning of it. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. But you can see here also my another owl, and what you can't see here there stands love. So and and. And the rose quartz a bracelet around. So this one here, and if you can see here at the top, my uh, another um, card by postcard by Wendy Andrew. I so love her art, and uh, yeah, I always love to to bring her art, uh, seasonal art, to my altar space. And you also see it here, in this one here. And of course, my gorgeous, gorgeous Lady Tilia, this time in her maiden mode, so to speak. And um, I guess I will turn to the motherly side of her um, for uh, Beltane, I guess. And what you can also see here are stones that surround uh, my goddess figure. And these stones came with Lady Tilia because, uh, uh, some of you know, this is a... Um, this is a figure that was made by my friend Emily. And um, by the way, if you uh, haven't watched some of her videos, just go over because she's up to a challenge she does for herself, an art challenge where she does spiritual paintings, I guess for every month. If I remember correctly, I mean, I don't know at the moment, <laughs> I'm lacking it. Um, but um Two pieces of art are already finished on canvas and you have to see it. I will I will link those two videos because it's breathtaking beautiful. So ha ah. <laughs> So um yeah and uh, she made this figurine for me this Lady Tilia last no not last year was it last year no the year before by the end of the year before, I guess, uh, 2000, I'm really bad with numbers and with dates, uh, 2014, 14, yeah. So, um, 
And you can turn this. This is a three-faced figure for a mother, maiden, and crown, or maiden, mother, crown, how you want to, which kind of, uh, yeah, order you want to put it. And um, this figure came with stones. Um, and now I will try to share with you the stones. This one here is a blue chalcedony, if this is the right word for it. And these stones are all coming from um, the shop that she and her husband are running, or at the moment her husband is running, and he also polishes the, these stones. And this is a citrine. This was the first time I saw natural citrine. Never saw it before. I all, all, yeah, always saw this artificial one. I tried to grab one. I have one. This artificial one is, is it this one? Yeah. Which is, you know by now, it's heated amethyst. Um, yeah. Um, heated by men, actually. Because um, citrine is actually also in nature. Um, a heated amethyst basically but uh, through yeah natural heat basically when i uh, i hope i don't speak nonsense here but uh, this was something i read on uh, in a book i guess so wonderful piece of citrine and this one here in front try to get it is an amazonite so this will be a bit of a crystal crystal video before I will make the big crystal video, because uh, uh, these stones uh, normally stay uh, near her near the altar space. I can't focus at the moment. One, well, there you can see it a bit. So normally I leave them here and don't remove them far away from from their altar space. So another piece. This is seraphonite, and again. It's not the best lighting condition here to to show these stones but at the moment it's so let's try to focus here there you can see it seraphonite so beautiful also rough seraphonite is really stunning so beautiful and last but not least try to grab it Arrgh. we have aventurine a light aventurine i also have darker ones but I hope I rem this is the right one. Sometimes I mix them up, but um, I still have the little uh, the little um, the little note that came with my lady Tilia, and I guess yeah, so she says the pale green one is aventurine, and um, I really love I really love it, and it's a gorgeous one, a gorgeous one. So. Yeah, while we are here with my with the stones here, I can I uh, can just sh share with you the other stones that are here on my altar space. So uh, let's move this away and let's see what you can see here. I don't know. I try to move it a bit. There, you can see my uh, yeah my pentacle. Also the garner's pentacle you saw on the back. I um, incorporated this in um, some kind of self drying clay. And always thought uh, if I should, yeah, if I should paint it or not. At the moment, I really like this tone, and uh, we'll stay uh, or with, we'll uh, stay with this one, like it is now. So we have for spirit here this kind of very light, uh, not the most beautiful one of um, amethyst. This was one of my first pieces, I guess. Slight. You see, it's also a light, looks a bit more like a crystal, clear crystal quartz here, part of it. So uh, this is for spirit. This is for air. This is a blue lace agate. It's a gorgeous piece. I wish I would um, have gone, got a, a smaller one because some of the other pieces are smaller. For fire, I have this gorgeous sunstone. It's a tiny one and I don't know some glitter you maybe can see but here you can see a bit of it it's a gorgeous small one this was quite pricey i have to say and i got it from um the only um one of our main local um 
rock, uh, yeah, crystal rock, whatever, mineral shops. Um, and it was quite pricey because normally when you see sunstones quite often, they are more uh, lighter and you only see tiny spots of this kind of color in them. And this one here was just the pure color and I loved it and it was, was quite pricey. And together with this one, I got this moonstone. Okay, I know. This is technically not moonstone, but it's called rainbow moonstone. And I guess I won't be able to share with you the, the beauty. This won't give any, <laughs> won't reveal its secrets. But um, yeah, this one here is basically a white label, right? So, but I wanted this color. And this for water. And then we have for earth. So what do you think is this? Is this one here? What do you think? This is a moss agate. <laughs> yeah, normally, you know, the, the green ones or the white and green ones, but they come in so much different variations also with uh, blue and green and I have a bigger uh, bigger piece of um, um, yeah moss agate with this which is a bit blue and greenish but they also come in this red tones and I thought this was quite quite appropriate for earth so you see here in the background if my camera want to focus again here is the clear quartz and I have some clear quartzes here at the at every edge of my to, uh, of my altar space mm. what can I share with you uh, also of course this bigger beauty here which you know by now possibly and I'm not sure if it will reveal in this angle it's not so easy to reveal its beauty I try to go a bit deeper here maybe oh, let's see let's see <laughs> one old woman Let's see. So now this is not the best angle to reveal it. So you can just see it a bit. I try to make it a bit deeper here. So here you can see it a bit better. This is a gorgeous piece. And I have to say, I never, when I go to, not, not necessarily um, to our, uh, yeah, a mineral shop but to the metaphysical shops they never have these kind of beauties here when they have labradorite they are just have a little bit of here and there but not, not this kind of intense one so you can see the quality this uh, one shop it's just a little oh here look at that it's just a little shop um the beauty uh, the beautiful stones they are selling here look at that whoa um, it's just stunning and the prices are, yeah, fitting for this quality uh, they have there. So it's it's totally fitting for this one. And I don't know, um, I when I was in the this uh, mineral shop, I um, saw these and was quite fascinated by them. They had quite a lot of these palm stones and I thought, oh, this would be so awesome to have and ask my boyfriend to gift me this for Christmas and um, I'm not sure but I'm quite I'm not totally sure 100% sure but I'm quite um, I believe that this was the very stone the very stone I had in my hand when I first was there so I don't know maybe I made this up in my head I don't know but I like this another piece so let's get back up here Another piece here you see is this red, uh, this pendant here, this red, uh, you see this fiery color here. This is also a snakeskin agate, uh, a red one. And I um, um, purchased this from uh, the shop of Emily's husband um, who, do, uh, who, do, who does these wonderful kind of wire uh, copper wire uh, wire, uh, <laughs> wire wrappings and uh, so stunning you can always find really gorgeous work there of him and I also will link it in the description box below and another piece here this is a piece of mm, yeah of uh, I guess it's called it's not it's not landscape jasper 
I try to remember. It's a Jasper, basically. And I really like this one here. Yeah, another piece that you... Here, this nut stone, it's, <laughs> of course, obviously. This is a gorgeous pendant I got from Ruth, my friend Ruth from Australia, from um, who also has a interesting and fascinating channel here. He's called um, Rainfire Dreaming. And she gifted me this for my last birthday. And this is a uh, koru, uh, actually a Maori symbol for growth and for um, awakening and new beginnings. And I quite like this here on my altar space. And this one here I got from my boyfriend last year. A wonderful pendant with a tree. It's like... It's, it, it's simply, I have to... Ah, yeah, the background is also gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah, some things I just have to keep on my altar space. And, yeah. What else can I show you here? My gorgeous hair here. <laughs> this is one I got from a spring market, I guess, two years ago or so. And some other things. Some of the, uh, the natural stones I have here. Look at this gorgeous beauty. This is, I have it in the uh, in the space here that is dedicated to the god, and uh, it's so stunning. And sometimes I don't recall where I found them. I'm, but with this one, I'm quite sure I got it when we were on vacation in Austria, and I guess I got, got it there. We came back with uh, really gorgeous stones there, and. Uh, yeah, but I guess this one I got there. I'm not quite sure, but I like these stripes here. And it is here with my, with my, uh, in my space for the God. And when you see here also, it guards my, the ring that I dedicated to the God. Um, this is actually a ring. Focus. Yeah. This is a ring I got from my mother, I inherited by my mother, or from my mother, after she died, and uh, I really liked it. It's quite funny, because this looks a bit like the triple moon here. Uh, <laughs> this is something I recognized only later. But, um, yeah, it was no way that I could dedicate this to the goddess now, because it was, yeah. Uh, I guess the god was quite stubborn and... Uh, uh, didn't want it to get another ring. <laughs> so the other one I will share with you, let's see, which has also her stone, but a flatter one. It's this one here, also one we got from Austria. And the ring that comes with it sits on the top, like this one here. It's also by my mother. And I wear these on special occasions. So, yeah, and I guess the rest you can see here. What I have here, this one here is also gorgeous. I wanted to put it in here. This gorgeous, gorgeous, um, how is it called in the Kingfisher? Yeah, I know. The Kingfisher uh, has a strange name here in Germany. He is called Eisvogel. Which is, at the f at first I thought, why ice vogel? This sounds like ice bird or so. No, it has nothing to do with ice in the sense of the cold ones, the cold one, uh, <laughs> the cold ice, but with the word eisen, the German word eisen, which means iron in English. Uh, I don't recall why eisen, possibly because the belly looks like a bit like rusty iron or so, but... I so love this little figure. This was part of a... I swear to hear. This was a kind of... You see, there was a collection you can't get. Our oh, pretty bird world or something like that. And um, Andy Pierce was the... the yeah, you can see. Uh, this was a collect collector thing that was going on. You could uh, get this kind of... Uh, uh, yeah, this kind of figures with uh, with a magazine to it, and this was the first one, which was quite uh, reasonable in price. The other ones were quite uh, pricey, and they not always look wa really wonderful. I have a I have a woodpecker, 
and I had a, a, a tit mouse, but this one sadly broke. So um, this one is one I really, really like. It's so stunning. This would when when I think how much this might cost in reality. Oh my gosh, and it was so okay with the price. So detailed. Yeah. So these are here residing here and you can see of course in the background my uh wendy andrew um postcards i have here for every 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 season sometimes i also have other postcards from other artists or something but always in the background i have these seasonal cards by wendy andrew because i love them so much so enough of rambling i guess it was everything i could show you here and a bit like here above what you can see here um yeah i guess i don't know if i shared with you the story here of the candle holders these were the first items i made myself and uh yeah i quite like how the uh, wax dripped down and uh looks quite antique and the first things i made for my for my altar space and when you go well, a bit more upwards you see the stack I really love to keep there and a bit more you can see <laughs> if you see there at the top of it uh, the painting by Emily Elijah with my elemental guardians so enough rambling here otherwise my camera will die <laughs> and probably you also because it's so long <laughs> so I wish you a wonderful season of Ostara we will see us very soon when I will share with you the secret of uh, making your own elder ink. Um, I'm not quite sure if you can use this elder ink in uh, within pens. I know, I don't know who it was. Uh, I guess it, guess it was Mewana. Uh, Me Mewana, I don't know how you... Mervana, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Sorry. Um, she uh, uh, was quite eager to learn about this because she has a fountain pen. I'm not quite sure how to it, this kind of ink will work in a fountain pen because it's mostly water-based. I don't know how the other inks are. Um, so maybe this is possibly something which you can use for, um, for a feather or something like that. But anyway, I guess try and error is <laughs> the only way to find it out. So... I will wish I want <laughs> I wish you a wonderful time of Ostara, although I did it, but doppelt genied hält besser, how we say it in uh, German. Um, so um, we are, uh, we will see us very soon. Again, I start to talk German, and um, I wish you a wonderful time, a wonderful day, a peaceful night, many blessings. Bye. <laughs>